Proper audio normalization is critical. When audio level is too high, then the clipping and distortions will occur, but when the audio levels are too low, then well, nobody will be able to hear you. And guess what? The human brain works in the way that assumes that the louder the audio, the better the audio. And definitely you do not want your viewers to adjust the audio levels between different videos. You just have to be as loud as everybody else. Okay, maybe slightly louder than the competition because like I said, we think that the louder audio is better than the more quiet audio. Oh, those our stupid brains. On top of that, every medium, every streaming platform, including YouTube, expects you to upload audio with the certain loudness. In case of the YouTube, it's expected to have the loudness of minus 14 loofs and true peak at around minus 1.5 decibels. If your audio is louder than the minus 14 loofs, then the YouTube will make your audio quieter. But if your audio is below minus 14 loofs, then the YouTube will do nothing. With the correct tools, you can do it no problem. Let me show you how to normalize your audio levels for YouTube using the DaVinci Resolve. Yes, the free and truly amazing DaVinci Resolve Resolve is everything that you will need for that task. In the meantime, do me a favor, hit the like button and write in the comments on what, according to you, is the hardest part of the production of the video. Let me know so I can prepare more tutorials on this topic. Thanks, it means a lot and it helps to grow the channel. As I'm working on the new video, I've prepared a short clip on which I will show you how to normalize the audio levels for YouTube. This is how it sounds straight from the microphone. We're gonna take a deep dive into the mechanics that are behind the beta. Not great, not terrible, but you probably notice that it's much quieter than what I'm talking to you right now. This is because this track was not normalized yet. To check how loud this clip actually is, let's go to the Firelight tab and here in the loudness level. Enable the lock measuring to the transport, it just starts the measuring when you start and stop the video. Use absolute scale and use the BS1770-4 metering method. This is the latest method of measuring the loudness and probably the best. Then when lock metering to transport is enabled, let's play the audio and let's observe the control room over here, which will give us the true peak of the signal and also the integrated audio which is our loudness level. We're gonna take a deep dive into the mechanics that are behind the Betaflight's PID. As you can see, the true peak is at minus 9 dB and the current loudness is on minus 25. If we remember that our target is minus 14 and here our target is minus 9, this means that, well, our audio is around... 11 loudness units to quiet. If then we will bump the gain on the audio track to plus 10, around we're gonna take a deep dive again, into the mechanics that are behind that. the Betaflight's PID controller because well, probably we slightly overdid because we are at plus 08. This is too much, while the integrated is still at minus 16. We cannot just bump the gains on the audio track because we will clip, but still our audio is not loud enough. Luckily, there's an easy fix and the fix is called compressor. Let's bring down the track gain back to zero because we will not be playing with that and let's double click on the dynamics to show up the compressor. Compressor is the audio processing function that makes the audio louder than the threshold slightly 
quieter. It's nicely represented in this graph. When on the horizontal graph we have the input and on the vertical we have the output. If I will enable the compressor we will see that after the threshold, the blue line over here done, we can steer the line will no longer be straight, but be bended. With the ratio of the compression 2 to 1, this is how it looks like, but for example, when I will bump the compressor to 4 to 1, it's even steeper, and then with the high compression values, it's almost flat. Of course, those high ratios is not something that we are usually interested in. Usually, the audio, the dialogue, should be compressed with something like 4 to 1. This is just the base level. Let's begin with the ratio 4 to 1, and let's see how louder we can make our audio without touching anything. Ratio at 4 to 1, let's set the threshold to the originally measured loudness of our track, which was around minus 24, and let's see what will be the computed loudness in We're this case. We're gonna take a deep dive into the mechanics that are behind the Betaflight's PI. As you can see, it's even worse because we made our audio even quieter than before. But this is fine. There is a makeup slider that allows us to bump the audio levels. We know that the control room shows us approximately minus 16, so if probably we will bump the audio levels to, let's say, plus 13 decibels and make the measurement again, we're gonna take a deep dive into the mechanics that are behind the Betaflight's PID controller because we have some nice progress. The peaks are still at minus 3.6, we can probably add extra 2 decibels to the play, and the integrated is at minus 70. One more time, we have approximately 2 decibels to still make our audio slightly louder. So let's bump this to plus 15 and let's do the measure. We're gonna take a Again. deep dive into the mechanics that are behind the Betaflight's PID controller because understanding is our peak is at minus 1.6, which is most probably fine, and also our integrated is at minus 15. That means we are missing only one decibel to be exactly on the target of the loudness for the YouTube. What we can do? We can, for example, slightly bump the ratio and add some extra makeup or perhaps add additional limiter to allow us to gain this one extra decibel of the loudness but if you ask me I think that this is just fine the values we got are just fine minus 1.6 on the true peak and minus 15 on the loudness is really fine. Yes, we can squeeze out this one extra decibel here and there, but if you ask me, this is not really that important. However, if you want to, you can do it by just applying the correct makeup, threshold, and the compression ratio. Now, here's the next video you should watch. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching, and like always, happy filming!